The average trade paperback sells for $15.95. The standard deviation for these prices is $1.05. What is the maximum percentage of trade paperbacks that cost more than $19? Whenever you're solving any statistics problem, the very first skill, the very first step, is to read the problem carefully and look for any keywords that tell you what method you should apply. So when I read this expression here that says, what is the maximum percentage? As soon as I see that, I'm thinking to myself, this might be a problem related to either Chebyshev's theorem or the empirical rule, because those two theorems or those two rules basically discuss the percent of data that's within a certain interval or the percent of data that lies somewhere on the number line. However, the word maximum here is very important because the empirical rule discusses approximate percentages, not upper bounds or lower bounds. So it doesn't give you maximums and minimums. It gives you approximate answers. Chebyshev's theorem, however, does give maximum or minimums. So if you hear the phrase at least, at most, maximum, minimum, you want to be thinking Chebyshev's theorem. There's one other way to definitively tell that this is not empirical rule. And that is empirical rule requires us to know that the data is bell-shaped, mound-shaped and symmetric, normally distributed, etc. right? We have to have this idea that the shape of the distribution is approximately bell-shaped in order to use the empirical rule. Well, we don't have any indication here that that's the case. It does not tell us to make that assumption. And we can't make that assumption on our own. So we have to be told that, and it's not told to us. So once again, we have more indication that it's not empirical rule, so it's most likely Chebyshev's theorem. Okay, so I'm gonna move forward then with the assumption that it's Chebyshev's theorem. The first thing I need to do then is to identify the mean, the standard deviation, and the interval that I'm working with. So let's start with the mean. The mean here is given as $15.95. The standard deviation, they say, is $1.05. And then they talk about one other number. They talk about this number $19. So I'm going to put that on a number line with the mean. So the mean would be, say, here at $15.95, right, to give us a reference point. That tells me that 19 is on the other side to the right of $15.95 because it's bigger, right? The thing about Chebyshev's theorem is that we're required to work with an interval that's symmetric around the mean. So what's the difference from 1595 to 19? In other words, how far away is 19 from 1595? We need to figure that out. So let's do that. We'll say 19 minus 1595. And we get the answer $3.05. I'm going to write that down here just as a mental note. Because Chebyshev's theorem must be used on an interval that is symmetric with respect to the mean, I know that I have to go the same distance this way to get an interval to work with. So in other words, I need to move $3.05 away from $15.95 in the other direction. So that means I'm going to take $15.95 and subtract $3.05, which of course give us $12.90. So there it is, $12.9 or $12.90. Okay, so I can use my Chebyshev's theorem on that interval. In other words, I can use it to tell me the minimum percent of data that lies within that interval. Now that's not actually what this problem is asking us for, but is the only thing we are capable of doing with Chebyshev's theorem. From that answer though, we can get the answer we want. I'll explain how that's done afterwards. But let's continue solving this problem with the assumption that it's Chebyshev's theorem and that we're gonna use that general approach. Okay, so the way I teach my students to do this is to take the upper limit of the interval, I'm gonna call this UL for upper limit, and we plug it into the following formula to get K. K is equal to the upper limit minus the mean over the standard deviation. The upper limit here is $19 minus the mean, which is $15.95, divided by the standard deviation, which is $1.05. Okay, let's work that out and see what we get. So the difference on top we already discovered was $3.05, but again, just to do it all at once, we'll say that it's 19 minus 15.95, close that up, and divide by $1.05. And when we're done, we get the decimal answer 2.90476, etc. right? I'm going to carry that out to about five places. 
Not that you have to carry that many places, but I want to not round very soon, right? I like to round not at all in the middle of the process of solving a problem. I try to round only at the end. So in fact, I'm actually going to use the full number when I do the calculation, but I'm just going to write down five decimal places. So 2.90476. So there's five decimal places. Okay, so that's my k, and then the theorem says one minus one over k squared times 100%, and this will give you the minimum amount of data that's within that interval from 1290 to $19. Okay, so let's do it. One minus one over 2.90476 squared, all that times 100%, right? So I'm gonna do one minus one divided by, and in this calculator, I can take the whole number there and put it right in the fraction so that when I square it, I'm not rounding at all. You don't have to do that. If you use five decimal places, you'll be fine. Press enter, you get this answer, and then if you multiply it by 100, it's the same as moving the decimal place over two places, but if you do that, you get 88.148, or let's just say 88.1. So this is not the solution to our problem. So it's very important that we interpret this answer. So all we've done so far, if you look at our steps, we wrote down the mean and standard deviation. We created an interval that surrounded the mean so that we could use Chebyshev's theorem. We used the formula for k to come up with our k value. With the k value, we plug that into our formula that comes directly from Chebyshev's theorem. And this gives us the minimum percent that's inside of here, right? So I'm going to write here above that at least 88.1% of the data is within this interval. And in fact, just to keep it simple numbers, it's okay if, for our purposes just to keep it simple if we say it's 88.0 or 88%, right? Let's just keep it simple for a minute. We can always go back and do the precise decimal answer in a minute, but let's go just to think 88% in our head. What I'm saying here is that inside this interval, there's no less than 88% of the data. Now the question doesn't ask about inside that interval. It wants to know what percent cost more than $19. In other words, they're asking about this. They want to know, what could this be? Well, what we know is that the interval we just created contains at least 88%. That means at most, outside of here, you couldn't have any more than 12%, right? And the reason why is because 88% is, is within the interval. So what could possibly be left outside of the interval? At most, 12%. Why is it at most? Because at least 88% means it could be 88% or more, right? We could have 100% of books within that interval. So the maximum it could be outside is 12%. That's the maximum. So at most or the maximum amount that could be outside of the interval is 12%. Now, some of you may be thinking in your head, wait a second, wait a second, why isn't it 6%? Why isn't half of it here and half of that amount here, right? Why isn't it most 6%? To think that way is to make the mistake of assuming that the data is spread out on the number line in a symmetric fashion, but that isn't assumed here. There may be no paperbacks that are less than $12.90. Now, most likely that's not true because I've personally seen paperbacks for less than $12.90, but we don't know how many of them are there, right? So we can't say in any intelligent way how much of the data that falls outside of our interval actually belongs on that left-hand side. All we can say definitively is that if this part contains 88%, then outside of that is at most 12%. And that's outside of it anywhere, right? So you could make the same statement about the lower end. At most 12% is less than $12.90. Remember, at most 12 is not giving you a definitive answer of what the percent is. It's just saying it can't be any higher than that. So we know, okay, that's an upper bound. It won't be more than 12%. Of course, it could be far less. It could be no 0%, or it could be 3%, or 2%, right? But the fact is, it isn't going to be any more than 12%. So while we don't have a precise or even an approximate answer, we do have an upper bound. We have a range, right? It can be anywhere from 0 to 12%. And that's still useful. It's better than a blind guess, right? At least we have sort of an upper bound on what could be above $19. All right. This is a very challenging problem, by the way. It certainly can be learned, though. So try to make it into a set of rules, like, for example, this phrase, maximum percentage. Try to remember when it asks you for that, 
That's not directly Chebyshev's theorem because Chebyshev's theorem gives you the minimum percentage. So you might remember that when it says maximum percentage, we have to take the answer we get from the interval that we've created and subtract that answer from 100 to get an answer like at most 12%, right? So that might be something you commit to memory. It'll help you solve these problems easier. This is something we can all learn to do, but it isn't going to be easy to learn, right? It's going to be a challenge, but it's not a challenge that is beyond any of us, right? We can all learn to do this, but it'll be a little bit of extra work.